So now let's move over to black shirts. We're gonna be doing a one color white print on a black shirt. This screen was prepared standard, so it's just a one in one coat of emulsion. We're gonna kinda compare this to the different screen that we'll show you on a different section on how to print white ink effectively using multiple coats of emulsion to create a uh, thicker stencil. Let's take a look at this screen right here. It's just a standard coat of emulsion, so if you wanna zoom in on that, you can see um, there's not a lot of edge definition and detail in the depth of that well or a stencil, as you will. And then when you can kind of compare that to the other screen in our other segment that you can view after watching this section, you see much more edge definition and a thicker stencil. So as you're watching this video, kind of compare and contrast the different results in the two stencil thicknesses. But most people are going to use a standard stencil like this, and so we're going to show you printing white ink on a black shirt and then flashing it and print, printing it again, how most people would do it. First, let's set our screen up again. So we'll loosen it up. This is just the one color press. The one color press has the same exact adjustments as the four color one station press does. So to make those adjustments, just review that section. Once again, we have center crop marks in this image. They're a little bit different than the other center crop marks, but it makes it very easy aligning it to the center crop line of the platen or palette. So we'll just tighten her down there. Now we have pretty good off contact, but we are going to be using an off contact tab just to ensure that the off contact stays consistent throughout the whole print. So with a white ink or a thicker ink, it's much more important to have that off contact. When you saw us print with a black ink, you really don't even need that much off contact with a really thin ink because it passes so easily through the screen and also the shirt, there's not a lot of ink, so whatever ink passes through the shirt is absorbed by the fabric. So with a black ink, you really don't even have to worry about off contact. So if you're used to printing with the hobby-based, water-based inks, or if you're used to printing with a black ink or thin ink on light garments, and then you switch to white ink on black shirts, it's a completely different animal. So what we're going to show now is actually doing the test print and then printing, but keep in mind that this off contact that we have here is about perfect and it's very important. Also the off contact tab on the top of the screen here. So let's spray our platen up. And we are going to be doing one test print just to ensure there's no pinholes and that all our registration marks are taped up. For this particular print, we're going to be using the ergonomic squeegee. The ergonomic squeegee is designed a little bit differently than the standard squeegees, and it gives you a little bit of an ergonomic advantage as far as how you're pulling or pushing the squeegee. Now, typically with white ink, we're going to pull the squeegee. I don't like pushing white ink because I don't feel that you get enough coverage on the actual garment or your print when you're pushing it. So white ink, I would probably recommend pulling it every time. Then we'll take our goop scoop and our ink knife and load a little more ink up in the screen here. This is the Rionet white ink. It's very creamy, but it has great opacity. Most kits will come with this ink. Then with this print, we do want to load the design up. And you can already tell if you watch the last segment of the black ink how much thicker this white ink is. So we load the design up. And with this, because you're printing so much thicker ink, you really need to focus on that squeegee angle and pressure. You don't want to smash the ink into the shirt. Remember, you want to shear the ink through the stencil thickness and through the ink well onto the garment or whatever you're going to be printing. So we're going to be about a, let's say about an 80 degree angle, 80, 85 degree angle, um, sometimes a little bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher, depending on your ink thickness and how much ink you want to lay on the garment, and then press down and pull. So you press down and pull, you're going to be clearing all the ink behind your squeegee. If you're smashing the ink into it, you can see you're not clearing the ink out of the screen. We'll do our first test print here. There we go. We're good to go. We do have a little smudging on the back of one of the letters here because of that um, screen opener still stuck through or we might have loaded the ink with too much scr um, the screen with too much ink. So we do want to clear that off 
with a dry paper towel. It's called um, wiping off the back edge of the screen. And we typically will do this with a dry rag or paper towel or screen wipe like we have here rather than with wet because wet the solvents get into the mesh and into the ink on the other side and that's no good. So dry just wipes that little bit of ink up fairly easily and we can save this screen wipe for another use. So now it's time to do the actual print. Let's measure print placement here with our finger method. So we're going to pull our shirt up just a little bit. Measure one more time. Three, four fingers. Uh, just a little bit more. And we'll put our neckline right here. All right. So we'll slide our shirt all the way on, remember, and then pull it back to the neckline. Do our first print. Now, with this stencil thickness, we're not going to get as uh, the amount of opacity needed to actually cover the shirt on the first pass. So we will do one print, and then we'll flash it, and then we'll print again. You see how that ink is allowed to release from the mesh right there? It's kind of done in a print and then release. So you let the screen pop back up. That's why it's important to have a new screen that has good tension on it and then the off contact tab at the end. Now we have a clean print, but it's not very opaque. So what we'll do is we'll flash it. Now what we're doing when we flash is we're just gelling the top layer of ink so we can put another layer of ink on top of that. This flash typically takes at three inches, um, two to three inches above the shirt, about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, once it's flashed, you want to touch it, and if it's tacky at all, you need to flash longer. Let it flash just a little bit longer. It should still be tacky, but no ink should come up on your finger. And then with one more print, we should be ready to go, and this shirt should be completed. Now, let me come in here, and you can actually see all the white inks sheared through the design. Um, there's no ink left in the mesh area. It's all on the shirt and it's all been cleared off the screen. We can actually drag our finger across the back of it and it doesn't pull up any ink. Now, with this design, we could back flood like that to load the ink um, back in the screen mesh. Well, this particular shirt is done. There we have it. Now, if we're going to be flash curing that at the final, for the final step, we will lay it all across the pallet like that and then let the flash dryer do its work for about 30 35 seconds. Now, white ink is different than black ink. White ink reflects light away from it or heat away from it, whereas black ink will absorb it. And color inks will absorb heat, which means color inks will cure faster. So, the white ink you do need to cure for a little bit longer while using your temp gun to ensure that it's actually reaching cure temp is very important to do. So we've reached cure temp just now. We're going to let it cure for about five more seconds. That allows the heat to travel from the top of the ink to the bottom of the ink. Remember, we need to do that more with white ink because we're going to put a thicker coat on. So this ink, you definitely will smell more, and that's the, the plastisol smell of curing. We have a cured shirt right here, and we're going to show you how to do one more curing test to ensure that a shirt is cured. Now, this curing test can only be done with actual uh, thicker coats of ink because it's called the stretch test. And what we're going to do is because this ink is plastisol ink, you should be able to stretch it and it should have some elasticity in it. You can't do that with our previous print because the ink is so thin. Both um, the consistency and the pigment of the ink is thin and then also on the garment it's thin. But with this black shirt, the white print on the black shirt, we can do that because the ink is thicker. So a stretch test will actually slightly stretch the shirt like that, and the ink should not break apart. If it cracks and breaks open, no good. But this ink is cured, and we're ready to do production. 
couple things I wanted to touch on when you're going to be doing a lot of flashing is you do not want your platen or palette to get very hot. What happens when you flash so much is that platen, especially the wood platens, which most presses have, absorb heat. So the more heat, because they are wood, they actually become very, very hot. What happens over time if they get too hot is they start to warp out like that. And then also the spray adhesive, once it reaches a certain temperature, will no, no longer work. So instead of having your shirt stuck down, it will turn into a goo and become very hard to actually hold the shirt down to the platen. So if you are doing a lot of flashing, you do want to let make sure that your ink cures, um, cools down before you actually do your next print. This will help the palette stay cooler and also help your screen from not actually curing ink in the screen. Because if you flash this really quickly and then pull down your screen and do a direct print over 320 degree ink, what's going to happen is your ink could cure in the screen and we have to clean it out with the screen opener or the orange power clean. So we make sure to uh, let the shirt cool down. We, if we only have a single station press, this might take maybe 5-10 seconds, uh, maybe even 30 seconds if we're doing a lot of flashing. That's why for doing your final cures, it's important to pull the shirt off and either set it over the palette like this or set it on a separate palette and do the curing away from the press. Using a multiple station press, um, a two, -color, um, two station press or like a four station press like one of the Riley Hopkins presses that we'll be using later, you don't have to worry about flashing as much because you're rotating around. So your flash station is going to be right here and then you have two cool down stations uh, or four cool down stations that allows your shirt to cure or cool down and then actually by the time you actually get back to your next print, you're good to go and you don't have to worry about waving your palette off or anything like that. So that's printing white ink on a black shirt using your standard uh, screen preparation method, the one-on-one -on -one coating method. Um, also check out this segment right here to learn more advanced ways to print white ink on a black shirt using a thicker stencil and different methods of actually pulling the squeegee.